Think back to when you were a kid and you first learned about static electricity. You take a blown up balloon, rub it for a few seconds on your hair, and watch as the charge from the static electricity pulled your hair straight out. Now think of that concept and apply it to objects strewn about across the cosmos. For years, the only object we've observed to conduct its own static electricity has been the moon. In an atmosphereless place in the universe, the charged dust particles helped create an entire environment filled with static. However, while it was presumed other places like the moon existed, there were no other examples collected by NASA or other agencies that had proof of such features occurring in our research purview. That is, until a random space probe mission made a fascinating discovery in 2005 that unveiled something near Saturn might withhold some of that same static electricity found on our very own lunar surface. To understand more about the moon itself and its static-filled secrets that lurk around its unique topography, here is a deeper dive into Saturn's moon called Hyperion and its fascinating particle beam shooting off into space. On October 15, 1997, a team of engineers sponsored by NASA, the European Space Agency, and the Italian Space Agency kicked off their Cassini space research mission in Cape Canaveral, Florida. The mission revolved around a robotic spacecraft traveling to Saturn to study both the origin and further details of Saturn itself, in addition to the various moons that orbit around the gas giant. Just about six years after their initial launch, and after conducting flybys of other planetary objects in our solar system, Cassini reached Saturn's entire system. Almost immediately, the probe quickly began relaying vital information to researchers on Earth, a process that would go on regularly for the next 14 years. It was only two years into the mission, however, that the Cassini probe detected something about the Saturnian system that puzzled astronomers from the second its readings became clear. Something on, or even within, the moon called Hyperion was not all that it originally cracked up to be. On September 26, 2005, nearly eight years to the day of Cassini's launch, engineers following the mission's details noticed something went awry on board Cassini that day. A few of the instruments were no longer functioning properly. However, nothing indicated the probe had been hit or made contact with another object. Luckily, the team at NASA, ESA, and the ISA checked in on one instrument in particular, the Cassini Plasma Spectrometer. According to the CAPS readings, Cassini had been magnetically connected to Hyperion's surface for a short period of time, leading up to the previous technical difficulties. With the magnetic connection, electrons and ions could escape from the surface of Hyperion and head in the direction of Cassini latching onto the robotic probe and giving researchers back on Earth a bit of a scare. The craziest part about this interaction was Cassini's relatively far proximity to Hyperion at the time of the particle beam attack. At the time, the robotic probe was 1,200 miles away from Hyperion's surface, making the 200 volt shock of electricity all the more mystifying. Luckily, Cassini carried on its missions for the next seven years without as much as a hiccup. It was regarded as one of the most successful probed missions in the history of our solar system's exploration, and did more than what its original engineers intended for the robot to do. And yet, they kept going back to that weird occurrence in September of 2005. There were no other such particle beam attacks across all of the Saturnian system before or after, including a direct visit by Cassini's lander vehicle, Huygens, on the moon of Titan. So, why did such an event take place on Hyperion to begin with? First, to understand the peculiar nature of Hyperion, 
also referred to as Saturn the Seventh, we must take a closer look at the satellite itself and its already unique place in our local solar system. Hyperion was first discovered in 1848 by a trio of astronomers named William Cranch Bond, his son, George Phillips Bond, and William Lassell. The name was derived from Greek mythology, with the English astronomer John Herschel bestowing the title upon the moon after Hyperion. Hyperion was a pre-Olympian god, who were referred to as Titans, and he was known for his observation. Ironically enough, the Hyperion equivalent in Roman mythology is the god Saturn. Before the discovery of the particle beam, Hyperion had long been a fascinating subject in the eyes of astronomers, both in the days soon and long after the Bonds and Lascelles picked it out of the night sky. First and foremost, Hyperion does not come in the classic spherical shape that we envision when we think of moons across the solar system. Rather, the shape is referred to as non-ellipsoidal, which is just a technical way of saying the moon has no equilibrium or balance with its gravity and pressure gradient force. With regards to such an irregular shape, Hyperion is thought to be one of the biggest objects in our solar system that does not come as a sphere. It's the second largest moon of its kind as well, only smaller than one of Neptune's satellites called Proteus. As mystifying as Hyperion's shape and size was to all who studied its place in the universe, it didn't take long before a hypothesis began to form. The first clue came in the form of Hyperion's largest crater. The crater in question is 75 miles in diameter and runs about 6 miles deep. The origin of the crater is directly related to the theorized origins of the moon itself. Many believe Hyperion is what remains of an even larger asymmetrical body that made impact with the second celestial object billions of years ago. While the second object remains largely undefined, if such a collision occurred, it could mean Hyperion is the leftover rock from something that once measured at 620 miles in diameter, a 66% increase of its current form. Where the rest of the projectiles born from the collision ended up is anyone's guess, and yet there are still signs that such an event took place. In 1999, Studies centered on the isotopic abundances of Titan, Saturn's largest moon and the second largest of the galaxy, showed nitrogen and hydrogen levels found on Titan's surface actually helped validate a theory that volatiles were once built up in the moon's atmosphere. These volatiles could easily be explained in their own origin as the remnants of the very crash that created Hyperion itself. Again, what the volatile object was remains to be seen. But with more and more studies undertaken on Titan, more and more clues could be uncovered. Another strange quirk to Hyperion's existence is its fairly simple composition. Despite its relatively large size, the moon comes with a much lower density. Because of this, astronomers believe Saturn the seventh is actually composed mostly of water ice, and the rock portion is much smaller than their initial beliefs. There was also once a thought that Hyperion may be nothing more than a collection of dust and other space rubble. And yet, this was also refuted when the reading of Hyperion's albedo, or the reflection of solar radiation, came in low, suggesting that the satellite is actually covered in a very thin layer of an undefined, dark substance. The most striking yet perplexing feature of Hyperion comes on its surface. Saturn's eighth largest moon shows off hundreds of craters, all of them deep and sporting sharp edges along the sides. The best comparison for Hyperion here on Earth is a massive sponge. Due to the vast amount of craters and the sponge-like exterior in general, Hyperion is estimated to be 40% hollowed space. This is in part thanks to the weak surface on the Moon, making its surface highly porous and compressed in on itself. In fact, the satellite's gravity is so shallow, most of the matter blowing around on Hyperion never returns if ejected from its surface. For example, the aforementioned dark substance lingering at the bottom of Hyperion's craters could swirl up and out onto the moon's surface, only to wisp away into the open and drift into space, never to be seen or studied again. 
which leads us right back to the original mystery. What left Hyperion's surface to send shockwaves through the Cassini probe? The answer goes all the way back to our metaphor about a balloon and static electricity. Unfortunately, Hyperion isn't doubling as an alien spacecraft shooting lasers at passing space probes. Nor does the moon harbor toxic thunderclouds filled with lightning that shoots off-world when something approaches the surface. Rather, Hyperion actually contains a particle beam that shoots static electricity from Hyperion's surface due to the volatility of Saturn's magnetic field. Saturn's magnetic field and all it encapsulates, called the magnetosphere, also covers Saturn's moons, including Hyperion. When ultraviolet light from the Sun enters the magnetosphere and then Hyperion's surface, charged electrons and ion particles rain down on the Moon constantly. These charged particles act exactly like the balloon rubbing against your hair or sweater. With enough of a charge, static electricity crackles into the fray. Static electricity is found on the Earth's lone natural satellite, through a similar process found in the Saturnian system. Now, with the Moon and Hyperion featuring similar sources of static, it leads astronomers and researchers alike to wonder what other objects withhold such an electric charge. The astronomer's hunch just might come true, too, when you look at old data connected to the asteroid Eros. It's been a long-standing belief that these types of relatively smaller bodies all have sources of electricity due to the motion of dust creating such a charge. Now they can turn their focus to other moons in the Saturnian system and even the Jovian system that also might contain these specific beams of charged ion particles. Studying these particle beams will make future missions, led by either humans or probes, easier to overcome. If static electricity creates the level of shockwaves experienced by Cassini, it could make these research projects riskier. However, if a better understanding of Hyperion and its family of static-filled objects across the cosmos comes to fruition, it may end up being nothing more than a blip on the radar. A lackluster, if not vital, puzzle box, solved amidst a sea of other mysteries, waiting to be found in the universe.